About 10 years ago, I was actually crafting a dungeon. It was an amazing dungeon delve. At the very base, there was a fire dragon, a, a red dragon. At this point in time, dragons were elemental. They weren't fire, they weren't red, they weren't white, they were fire, they were ice, they were poison. I had elemental dragons. Well, what I wasn't planning for was the players actually called out the red dragon. They put an entire plan together, and at first I was like, okay, I'm gonna have the dragon come out and he's gonna smoke them. Well, they engaged in conversation. As the conversation developed, they befriended the elemental dragon. Remember, I wasn't playing chromatic dragons as bad and metallic dragons as good. It was an elemental dragon. And they befriended the dragon, coming to his common senses, basically adhering to him and giving him things that he wanted to have in exchange for his help. This completely bypassed an entire segment of the dungeon that I had built. So remember, it's one thing to prepare, but make sure that you're flexible. I could have railroaded them and forced them to do the dungeon, but instead, I had one of the most memorable gaming experience I had. I was prepared. I had the dragon fleshed out. But I also spent about 15 hours developing a dungeon delve that never happened. And I was willing to let that go to have something else instead. Now, what happens? What can you do by being prepared, but being flexible and not have that wasted time? Let's talk about it. Having a solid plan when it comes to prepping does not mean the players have to go that way. It means preparing for what could happen, the key NPCs and the major points that you want the players to be part of. When you have high level bullet points, it allows you to be flexible around the small things. The big key points are going to happen whether the players are involved or not. Now, when they're involved, how do they move those things? What are possible outcomes? The thing is, is you really have to come up with three directions. If the players move the needle this way, this happens. If the players move the needle this way, this happens. And allowing for that flexibility. A solid plan does not mean railroad. What it means is you understand the key principles behind what you're trying to tell story-wise with the players. Not to the players, with the players. Allowing the players' influence to affect the overall story. Not necessarily change it and setting entirely new directions because there are forces at play that are larger than just the players. Just because the story, the players have effect, just because their actions matter, does not mean you have to take the story and do this. If the players deviate off, tell that story. But this story still happens. If this story is affecting the world, that's still affecting the world as the players are going over here. They don't have to be involved. Food for thought. When it comes to dungeon mastering, game mastering, and any TTRPG, expect the unexpected. What it really means is this. If you expect the players to go down a certain path, expect them not to. It's not going to happen. They're going to think of something else creative. When you have that in your mind, it makes it so you're not so rigid you can't deviate. Listen, I understand we can talk all the time about it. If they go down this path, it's an ogre. If they go down this path, it's also an ogre. The quantum ogre theory, that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm saying allow your players the flexibility and allow their actions to influence what happens. You don't have to reskin. You don't have to redo anything. But when you start telling the players that something's down this path and you start telegraphing and they're like, you know what? We're going to go back because we don't want to go mess with that. Okay, fine. Figure out why their motivations change, why they're not willing to deal with that to get to their end, end goal. Was the hook going down that way not strong enough? Expect the unexpected and you won't ever be frustrated when your players choose to do something else. It will help you become more creative as a dungeon master. The number one tip when it comes to DMing, adapt your encounters. Allowing player action to affect encounters is the most impactful thing you can do as a dungeon master to make the players feel like their actions matter. When you telegraph down this path, there's an ogre. They see the footprints. They hear the breathing. They can see the destruction. And they say, you know what? We're going to send our familiar forward and actually scope it out. Allow the familiar to see it. Allow the players to have an advantage in that fight. But Richard, I set up this time with this fight and I wasn't expecting them to do that. That's okay. When the players take actions to make a fight easier, they want an easier fight. They want to see the fruition of their labor, right? Allow them. Now, you might can say, hey, you can see the camp inside of a cave where inside the cave you can't see, but outside there's definitely a fire with a giant roasting pot and there's an entire deer over the top of that. You can tell that something's being cooked there and it's not by the size of a regular human. Now, they think the ogre is inside the cave. Now, it could be inside the cave. It could be doing a patrol. It could have friends. You just don't know at this moment. Remember, 
I'm adapting the encounter. I have the encounter set, ogre, cave, they're supposed to run into each other. Do the players go after the ogre or do they start to go around? Does the ogre then chase them off and just get it out of its territory, then retreat back? Why did it do that? Does it have a family there? None of those things I have the answer to. I put an ogre in a cave and I, I basically allow the players to encounter it, roll a perception check, and then everything they do flushes that encounter out. All I need is a stat block and then I can allow everything else to come from the adaptation. When you allow that flexibility and encounter, it is amazing how much better of a dungeon master you become and how much better of encounters you have. Improvise your dialogue. Bullet points, do not do scripted dialogue. Practice it. And the easiest way to do this is to basically take your character and say, what are they trying to accomplish? And then allow everything else to flow from that. This takes practice. But remember, if you're improvising your dialogue, it's amazing what you can actually do when it comes up to creating amazing conversations. You're going to be bad at it in the beginning. Stop trying to script the dialogue and just think, what's this guy trying to accomplish? How would I say someone if I was trying to feed my family? Would I allow the party to have discounts? What would I do if I was this NPC in this situation? That is the biggest improvisation trick I can give you, and especially when it comes to dialogue. You'll be amazing at how that affects your game. If you're preparing a lot and you're trying to be flexible, the one thing I can caution you on is maintaining story cohesion. So here's the deal, is that when you have a story that you're telling, a group story between me and players, there's a lot of flexibility that comes into account. Maintaining the cohesion of that story is one of the most important things you can do because that story that you're telling is going to have lefts, it's going to have rights, but in the end, there's a main arch, a main path that happens outside of the players. That's the easiest way to maintain cohesion, is make sure that the events that are happening around the players continue to happen with or without the player's influence. If the players do influence something part of the story, make sure it stays that way. If you're going to retcon something, be transparent about it. Say, the entire time you've been doing this, this is what happened, I need to make sure everyone's okay with that. The last thing you want to do when it comes to preparing and being flexible is to retcon something with Without the player's input, without the player's feedback. It is the worst to feel like nothing that you've done makes any difference because you'll just change something. Let the players know and talk about it outside. Otherwise, keeping the story cohesive will make sure the players feel like their actions matter. Their characters aren't just frivolous beings inside of a world. So that kind of gives you some ideas when I'm talking about preparing and being flexible, what to do. Remember something. It's okay to prep. Prep as much as you want. But don't prepare so much that you want to force your characters in a pathway. If you prepare and your characters and your, your players aren't going down the story that you're preparing, we need to ask why that is. Why are the players not going after my hooks? I've done entire videos on how to pay attention to your players. If your players aren't grabbing the hooks, it means they're not interested. They may have told you, my characters want this, but then they don't get it. That's because the players aren't motivated to do that. They're trying to be, they're trying to be their characters, they're just not succeeding. So remember, when you prepare, make sure that you're also flexible. Make sure that you allow the character's actions to influence what's happening. Now, it doesn't mean that I can't take bits and pieces of my story and hold on to it. At the very beginning, I said that, hey, I had an entire encounter with a red dragon that I put 15 hours into and the players bypassed it completely. I took that entire encounter, that entire setup, that entire dungeon that the players never saw, and it became a black dragon's lair later on. All of my work didn't go for waste. Remember, when you prepare something, if the players don't encounter it because they choose a different path, that doesn't mean you can't save it and use it for something else later. It is not considered a quantum motor. It is not considered lack of agency if you take something you've prepared and used it later for a different encounter with a different skin, with a different rethink. You have a limited amount of time. You are not required as a dungeon master to be able to improv everything. At the same time, everything you prepare does not always have to be used. It's a balancing act. It's one that gets talked about a lot. In the end, as long as everyone's having fun at the table, player agency, dungeon master prepping, it doesn't matter. What matters is you having fun. If you find these tips useful, like, comment, subscribe, tell me how you use lack of prepping or prepping to be flexible or not be flexible. And as always, guys, we will see you next time.